Hi, welcome to lesson 5.5, proving triangle congruence by side, side, side. Okay, so first thing, on page 143, please cross off that page. You do not need it. Um, and then turn to page 144. And please glue a half sheet of paper with the word um, with the, for construction. And we are going to copy a triangle using the side, side, side method. Once you're ready, go ahead and continue the video. On page 145, you are going to do problem number one here. Monitoring progress questions one through three are going to go in this area. And question number four is going to go down here at the bottom. Now, for the sake of this lesson, we are not going to cover the hypotenuse leg theorem. Just so you know that. Now, because we are cutting off a few things, please turn to page 146 of your extra practice and cross off problem number five in your extra practice and problems number six and seven. Now, this is due to the distance learning. If we go back, when, when we go back, or if you're seeing this video and we are no longer in distance learning, then you are responsible for doing problems number six and seven. Of course, I will clarify that in class. But for the sake of distance learning, uh, today is November 14, 2020, and we are in distance learning, so you will not be doing six and seven. All right, so let's go back to page 144. Here's what we're doing. We are going to copy a triangle using the side, side, side method. So first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your half sheet of paper already glued. Divide your paper in half after you do the, um, the title, which is construction, copying a triangle by side, side, side. What I want you to do is I want you to create a triangle where all three of the sides are different. Just like this. Okay, all three sides are different. And I'm going to call this triangle A, B, and C. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy segment AB. Okay, so you are going to uh, copy segment AB. Then we're going to copy segment AC and then segment BC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that is bigger than AB. Okay, so here is my A prime. Can not really see it? Okay, so grab your compass and measure AB. Okay, from A to B. Now go to A prime and draw yourself a little arc like that. Now this point right here is my B prime. So far, what I have done is I have copied AB into A prime B prime. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to copy AC. Okay, so we're gonna copy AC. Now, we're not gonna fully copy the segment yet, but just watch what we're gonna do. Okay, measure from A to C like this. Go to A prime and draw yourself an arc like this and just leave it there. Okay. Go ahead and measure from B to C like this from B to C. Put it on B prime and draw an arc such that they both both arcs will cross. So this point right here, we're going to call that C prime. Now the distance from A prime to C prime is the same as from A to C. 
the distance from B prime to C prime is the same one as B to C. So then all you have to do now is connect and create your triangle. So therefore, this segment is congruent to that segment, and this segment is congruent to that segment. Okay, so we just copied AC, and we also just copied BC. Okay, so this one and this one. Now, what you have here is three segments that are congruent, okay? You have segment AB congruent to segment <clears throat> A prime, B prime. You have segment AC and segment A prime, C prime congruent. And you have BC congruent to B prime, C prime. So you have three pairs of congruent sides. Now, if the angles are all the same, then that means the triangles are congruent. But in reality, we only really need one angle. And it could be an included angle because we already know that the side angle side theorem allows me to say that a triangle, is a pair of triangles are congruent if two pairs of sides are congruent and an included angle. So if I look at A, okay, angle A is about 60 degrees, and angle A prime, actually I did it backwards, A is 60 degrees, and A prime is also 60 degrees. So they're congruent. What does this mean? That means that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. And the, the, the only reason why they're congruent is because not only all the sides are congruent, but one angle is congruent as well. And by side angle side, they're gonna be congruent. So yes, we are using side angle side congruence theorem to show you how side 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 congruence theorem is going to work, okay? So we call this the side 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 congruence theorem. It's a really, really easy theorem to to notice and apply. Okay, so let's move on to page 145. So here's the theorem. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Remember that this whole chapter is about proving triangles are congruent. The first method that we had was you had to show that all three pairs of sides and angles were congruent to show that they're congruent. That's how you've seen the definition of congruent triangles. The first tool that we learned, uh, or second tool you would say, is the side angle side congruence theorem, where it required uh, two pairs of sides congruent and an included angle. The third one that we just learned right now is the side 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 congruence theorem. And all it required was three pairs of congruent sides. And I do have a little cheat sheet that I'm gonna provide you guys later on. I don't wanna give it to you yet, but this is what we have right now, three pairs of congruent sides. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and begin our examples. And our first example is a proof. Yay, a proof. I love proofs. It's an easy one, by the way. Okay, so here's what you have. You have KL congruent to NL. You have KM congruent to NM. And they want me to prove that triangles are congruent. And in this case, they want me to use side, side, side congruence theorem. According to this, I only have side and another side. I'm missing one more side. So where is that other side gonna come from? Well, if you look at this one, it's a common shared side. Anytime you have a common shared side between two triangles, uh, we'll imply that that side is gonna be congruent to itself. So LM is gonna be congruent to LM. That's my third side. So let's begin our proof. All right, first thing, KL 
is congruent to NL, given. Now you could put this on the same line if you want to. You don't have to. Okay, KM congruent to NM, that is also given. And here's what is not given that we are deducting. LM is congruent to itself. So LM congruent to, now here's a question, is it going to be ML or LM? Go by this, LM, LM, it stayed the same, so you leave it the same. And that is not given, that is the reflexive property of congruence. Now you have three pairs of sides that are congruent, Therefore, the two triangles are now congruent. And the reason? The side, side, side congruence theorem. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is example number one. So if you need more time, pause the video and then start it whenever you're ready. Here's the next examples. Okay, it's called monitoring progress questions one through three. There's really not much work to show on this. Um, I know mine are laid out vertically. You guys don't have that vertical space. Lay them out horizontally. And they want to know, decide whether the congruence statement is true. Well, we, in other words, they're asking, are they congruent or not congruent? So let's look at the first one. Here you have your first pair of sites congruent. You have your second pair of sites congruent and you have your third pair of sites that are congruent. So these two, these two, and these two. Okay, once again, you have these two, these two, and these two. So yes, you do have your three pairs of congruent sites. So yes, they are congruent by side, side, side congruence theorem. Now let's look at this one. For this one, check this out. You have one pair, okay? And you have a second pair. Now you're probably thinking, where's the second pair? Keep in mind, AC is a common shared, a common shared side. So it counts like two, okay? So if this side is nine, then this side is also nine. So you do have a second pair. Okay, here you only have two pairs of sides that are congruent. Okay, but side, side, side requires three pairs of sides. Because look, three and four, they're not the same. Okay, so therefore this one is a no. Okay, there is no side, side, side congruence theorem, you know, applied here. On this one, you have one pair of sides here. You have a second pair of sides here. And a third pair of sides right there. So yes, you do have three pairs of congruent sides. So therefore, yes, these are congruent by the side, side, side congruence theorem. All right, let's take a look at the last one. It looks confusing, but honestly, it is not, not that bad. All right, it's an actual proof. It says the television antenna is perpendicular to the plane containing B, C, and D, and E. Each of the cables running from the top of the antenna to B, C, and D have the same length. Hint, hint, they're congruent. Prove that triangle AEB, AEC, and AED, that they're all going to be congruent. Okay, so here's what you have. Let me explain. Um, if I were to just look at two triangles, okay, if you have, for example, D, E, and A. Now, here's the thing. They're all perpendicular. AE is perpendicular to DE, kind of like here, okay? 
So that's a right angle right there. This side is congruent to itself. No, 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 I'll take it back. This one is congruent to um, the other one. So let me do another one. I'm going to do the other one that is right here on the side. A, E, and B. Okay, it's also a right angle, and this one is congruent to that one. Okay, now the third triangle, I know it's kind of hard to see it there, because it's kind of like um, in the front, is E, not E, A, A, E, and C. That one's also a right angle, and this one is also congruent. So here's the thing. Isn't AE the same thing for all of these? It sure is. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. Now, I know this one, um, it's, it's the hypotenuse leg theorem, the one that we did not do. But the hypotenuse leg theorem is that if you have a set of triangles that that is a right triangle and you have the hypotenuse and the leg that is the same, then they're going to be congruent um, as well, okay? So if we continue to do the proof on this one, okay, we would have AE perpendicular to EB, AE perpendicular to EC, and AE perpendicular to ED. Now, all of these here are given, okay? Also, uh, you would have AB congruent to AC congruent to AD. That is also given. Now, based on the fact that all of these here are congruent, you would have the following angles congruent as well. You would have angle AED congruent to angle AEB congruent to angle a, E, C. Why? Because these are all right angles. So we know that all right angles are congruent. So all right angles are congruent. All right. So we did skip a theorem on this one, and it's called the HL theorem. Now, I'm just showing you guys this, but you are not going to have any questions that have that HL theorem. I just want you guys to know it. Okay. The HL theorem is called the hypotenuse leg theorem. Tells you that a set of triangles are congruent if they have at least uh, a hypotenuse the same and a leg the same. Okay, so here what you have is exactly that. You have hypotenuse leg, hypotenuse leg, and I know it's a hypotenuse because these are right angles. So therefore, this is congruent to this and this is congruent to that. So if you don't understand this part, it's okay. I wouldn't worry so much about it because it's not going to be tested. I just want you guys to know about it. And it's called the hypotenuse leg theorem. All right. Please make sure you guys are working on your extra practice and I will see you all later.